right. Welcome, everybody. This is our April 18th, 2023 regular scheduled board meeting. Declaration of a quorum, six members present, one absent. Welcome to this meeting of College Station Independent School District Board of Trustees. We were elected at large to represent the interests of our community and our state in educating our students. Our mission for our students in this district is success each life, each day, each hour. We adhere to all pertinent laws, policies, and procedures in posting agendas and conducting our meetings. The detailed agenda information was made available to us at least 72 hours in advance, and we have all come to this meeting informed and prepared. We've just completed a workshop where we heard reports and discussed much of the information needed to make decisions in either this meeting or in upcoming meetings. This is a meeting of the seven trustees in a public setting rather than a public meeting. As such, public comment is included on the agenda at a specific time and requires us to listen rather than take action so as to abide by the Open Meetings Act. We are pleased that you have taken time this evening to join us. We are very proud of this school district and we thank you for your interest in and support of our students. That'll bring us to item C, recognitions, Mr. Martindale. Thank you, Mr. Warak. This evening, we have our friends from South Knoll and Forest Ridge that are going to assist us with our pledges and moment of silence. So, Ms. Richter, Ms. Cott, if y'all will come forward uh, with your representatives and, and we'll allow them to introduce and take care of us this evening. Don't worry, it's hard for me too. <laughs> so, good evening, Mr. Warak, members of the board. Mr. Martindale and all of you. I am Teresa Cott. I'm the principal at Forest Ridge Elementary and I have two fabulous Falcons here who are going to introduce themselves to you. So you might think you're seeing double, but there really are two of them. And I'm going to tell you a little bit of history real quick before I let them introduce themselves to you. So about 20 plus years ago, this process started with students coming to lead pledges. So we bring a little bit of student into these fabulous meetings. And the person who started that is Ann Ganter and their grandmother. So I feel like maybe we're a little bit full circle here, a little bit, Miss Ganter. They call her Yinge. So anyway, so these are Yinge's grandchildren. So I'll let them introduce themselves to you. So Addison Jackson and Bailey Jackson. Hi, my name is Addison Jackson, and I go to Forest, I'm a fourth grader at Forest Ridge Elementary School. I started at Forest Ridge when I was in kindergarten. At Forest Ridge, we do. Soar? 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 And that encouraged us to do scene based activities once a week. My favorite source theme activity was, well, I couldn't really pick one. They're all my favorite. They're all super fun. Um, my, fav my favorite subject is definitely math. And um, my favorite thing about Forest Ridge is definitely how all the teachers are so nice. Um, when I grow up, I want to be a veterinarian. And um, Oh, so in a minute. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Good evening. My name is Bailey Jackson, and I am a fourth grader at Forest Church Elementary. I have been going to Forest Church since I was in kindergarten. I am a flip leader, and my favorite subject is reading. At Forest Church, we do SOAR, and that encourages us to do STEAM, STEAM learning activities at least once a week. My favorite STEAM SOAR activity that we've done so far is, actually I couldn't think of one, they're all my favorite. My favorite thing about Forest Church is honestly everything. My favorite thing to do outside of school is gymnastics. My, oh, when I'm older, I hope to be a gymnastics coach. Okay, okay Ms. Rachel. Yeah. 
Good evening, I'm Laura Richter and I have the very good fortune of being the principal at South Knoll Elementary. And I brought two young ladies with me this evening to help us with a moment of silence. Um, these young ladies were selected, I just wanna tell you one quick thing because I promised I would brag about them. They entered something called the Texas Elementary Art Meet where they each selected a piece of art and then had to write written responses about what art techniques they used, um, what they would do if they did something, did it again, what they would do differently, the techniques they used, just all kinds of things about art and how they created their piece. And they both received exemplary ratings from the judges. So not only are you seeing two fabulous South Knoll students, you're seeing two very talented artists. And I'm gonna let them introduce themselves to you. I have to say my last name. No, you don't have to, you want this? No. My name is Piper Wallace and uh, I forgot. Here, you want your spray paper? <laughs> uh, I'm in fourth grade and, and favorite? my favorite subject is math. You want to say anything else? No. Okay. <laughs> Piper, wait, we're not done yet. Oh, yeah. Okay, Adeline, come on, baby. My name is Adeline Eschberger. My name is Adeline Eschberger, and I and I'm in third grade. My favorite subject is reading and writing. My favorite thing to do at South Knoll is art. My favorite thing about South Knoll is playing outside. I am proud of winning in art competition. Is that all you want to say? Yeah. Okay. All right. Please stand, salute, and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please join me in the salute to the Texas flag. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Please join me in, in the moment of silence. Thank you, you can take a seat now. Very good. Good job. So Mr. Horak Moore, this will move us to item C2. We have a number of student recognition. So I'm going to turn things over to Mr. Glenwinkle. Chuck. Thank you, Mr. Martindale, Mr. Horak, members of the board. Uh, it is indeed, again, my pleasure to uh, recognize students in College Station ISD who have achieved success on a state and or national level. Um, and tonight, first, we're going to start with uh, our Business Professionals of America students. A little about them, a total of 17 students from A&M Consolidated and College Station High Schools recently, qual recently qualified to compete at the Business Professionals of America National Conference by placing in their respective events at the state conference. The BPA National Leadership Conference will be held in Al Anaheim, California, April 26th through 30th. BPA is an organization that supports business and information technology uh, educators by offering co-curricular exercises based on national standards. 
The following CSISD students qualified for nationals, and when I call your name, please come forward uh, over there to Mr. Martindale on your right-hand side uh, to receive a certificate and be recognized. I I'm also gonna say their name and what event they qualified in. So Kelly Ding in Legal Office Procedures. Ali Dwan in Intermediate Word Processing and Visual Design Team. <laughs> Caleb Farnell in Health Insurance and Medical Billing. <laughs> Armand Gilani in Payroll Accounting. Joseph Ha in Human Resource Management. Addison Jennings in Business Law and Ethics. Hey Young Lee in Ethics and Professionalism. Alan Lee in C++ Programming. Andrew Lee was on the presentation team. Forrest Liu, Economic Research. Iman Momin, Intermediate Word Processing. <laughs> Justin Palazzolo, Extemporaneous Speech and was on the presentation team. <laughs> Hannah Sanchez Ausik on uh, in Payroll Accounting. Iman Virani was on the presentation team. Will Wang, Java Programming. Margaret Witten, Visual Design Team. Abigail Yao in Basic Office Systems and Procedures. <laughs> Much of these students' success is due to their fantastic advisors. Um, so we'd like to recognize the five advisors from uh, the two high schools this evening as well. Um, this first one uh, was named the Region 3 Outstanding Advisor this year, and that's Shanika Brooks. Miss Terry Casto. <laughs> Dawson Deer. <laughs> Kathy Fisher. And Kelly Yates. All right, we're going to move from Business Professionals of America to some art uh, recognitions. Um, we had a pair of CSISD students that had their art selected to be showcased at the state capitol as part of an exhibit of school art from across the state of Texas. The exhibit was held at the Bullock State History uh, Museum during the month of March. 
Uh, when I call your name, please come forward and be recognized. Cole Herbalin. And so Cole's art teacher at South Knoll Elementary is Amber Herbalin. Come on up, Miss Herbalin, and be recognized. Looks like we got a ball game here in a minute. The other student is Lauren Colston. And Lauren's art teacher at College View is Miss Ann Reif. Few more art recognitions. Uh, we had three A&M Consolidated High School students uh, earn the right to have their piece of art compete at the Texas Art Education Association Visual Art Scholastic event by qualifying at the Region 6 event. More than 974 pieces of art were entered at the regional, regional level, and of those, only 63 advanced to state, and College Station ISD had three of those. The state competition will be held this weekend, April, Sorry, next weekend, April 28th and 29th in San Marcos. When I call your name, please come forward and be recognized. Shirin Gohill. <laughs> Madison Jackson. Kendall McKinney. And their art teacher at AM Consolidated High School is Miss Lindsay Goff. All right, the final group we're going to recognize uh, this evening uh, is a group of exceptional swimmers, the A&M Consolidated Girls 200-yard medley relay team placed third at the 2023 UIL 5A uh, state swim meet. The team had a time of one minute, 48.9 seconds, uh, and the team consists of two sophomores and two juniors, if I know. Okay. <laughs> so we really don't know is what it is here. Uh, but a lot of them are coming back, so we expect good things next year as well. So when I call your name, please come forward and be recognized. Sam Poole. <laughs> Catherine Rasmussen. Sammy Shankar. And the A&M Consolidated High School head swimming coach, Coach Jenny Markwart. Grace, yay, sorry. I went <laughs> Thank you. Jenny Markwart, come on down. <laughs> Head coach Jennifer Markwart.
Mr. Martindale, Mr. Horick, that includes our recognitions for this evening. Now to bring us to item C3, as we've already heard, uh, we have some talented artists in our district on a national level, um, but we do want to recognize the artwork there at the back of our boardroom from the Forest Ridge and South Knoll Elementary. So make sure you check those out before you depart tonight uh, and see all the fantastic artists that we have beyond what we're listed and recognized tonight. Bring us to item D1, board reports. Who would like to go first? You look like you're gearing up. So uh, DEIC met last Wednesday and um, there was a superintendent's update, uh, which uh, mainly Mr. Martindale will probably give us a lot of the same information today, but uh, in regard to the long range planning, facility planning uh, committee, as well as the status of our superintendent search, uh, there was also a, um, a, a showcase Yes, of the uh, <clears throat> various different uh, pro uh, uh, programs, um, you know, math, English, art, science, so forth and so on, which, uh, and then lastly, the uh, uh, district improvement plan was approved and uh, we'll have a presentation on that in a little while. I can go next, I gotta read some of mine. Ms. Benden gave me a nice update because, um, this last week we did the grant showcase where we take a lot of our donors and other folks throughout the community around to showcase some of the, the grants that, that the Education Foundation um, sponsored throughout the year and it's a really great time to show off our schools to people in our community and some of those that support our schools. So they saw the chemistry road show and, and a live, broad, live stream broadcasting uh, grants that are both at CSHS. And then at um, River Bend Elementary, they, look, they saw the book vending machine, which is just a really cool thing. I think almost all of our elementaries now are getting these book vending machines where kids earn tokens to go out and get books out of a vending machine. And, and that's been very popular across a lot of our schools. Um, so they got to see those and then some other um, projects throughout the elementary. And then they also, over lunch, had a presentation about the district-wide ed tech cohort grant. And um, we've heard a little bit about that one before, about getting uh, having classrooms with one-on-one -on -one laptops and or devices and seeing how that is affecting the learning. And then she wanted to make sure I thanked St. Joseph Health, the Caldwell County Chevrolet, and Van Stavern uh, Animal Hospital for sponsoring that big day. And then the last thing to add is that next week is one of the fun Hall of Fame events. Happened a little earlier this year, the, uh, the Hall of Fame event is happening and look forward to honoring some of those amazing students and really the amazing educators that got them there. So that's it. All right, I can report on Head Start Policy Council. I didn't get to go to the meeting because it was the exact same time and day as our last uh, oversight workshop. Um, however, um, they met in person for the first time this year and I heard it was fabulous. Um, and they're gonna start doing that more next year as well. And they talked about the COLA, the, the um, okay, help me remember what COLA stands for. It's the cost of living. Cost adjustment. of living, yes. Yeah, so they, they approved that and that's on the consent agenda for us tonight. And also they have had over the last month, they've had a couple of family fun field days where lots, hundreds of families have participated, which is always a good thing. Anything else? Uh, personnel advisory committee actually had a bunch of things. I won't go over all of them, but one, perhaps two that are most important. Uh, uh, reliable internet, the Wi-Fi access points that we approved from the boot, uh, 
21 June uh, bond or bond of 21 that we ordered in June arrived, right? So we finally have our, that only took how long, a year, whatever? Yeah. Um, so we have the parts in for improved uh, Wi-Fi access, which I know is an issue for uh, multiple campuses. So that'll be upgraded. Um, and then the uh, dental and pharmaceutical insurance. As someone who teaches ethical leadership, we had some students. I thought the teachers could just trade teeth cleanings and prescription drugs for good grades, but uh, the lawyer on the board said it's frowned upon, um, but they are working on that um, as well. All right. Um, before we move to the superintendent update, I just want to remind everybody out here that's watching, that might rewatch, um, that the board did approve uh, to have into learning help with our superintendent search. Uh, that being said, um, they have empowered the community to take a five question survey uh, to answer some stuff uh, that we can use as we move forward in this superintendent search. And you can go to CSISD.org. Um, I'm on it right now. It's right in the middle of the page under CSISD superintendent search. Um, I believe it was also emailed out. So. If you can uh, and are looking to provide feedback for us uh, and into learning as we move through this process, we greatly appreciate it. And uh, you can go to the website for that. Other than that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Martindale. Thank you, Ms. Torek. And, and just to the right on our website of the superintendent search banner is the Long Range Facility Committee yes. matter, correct? Long Range Facility Planning Committee uh, has met three times already uh, over the two previous weeks. Uh, the last meeting was this Saturday where they did a tour of uh, some of our facilities. They'll resume their meetings next week, uh, the 25th. They should conclude by the first part of May, and I would very much, they're tracking very much on schedule to bring uh, a recommendation to the board at the May regular meeting. Um, that would be the earliest, but they're tracking uh, on schedule at this point in time. I point that out uh, uh, with Mr. Horak is, after each meeting, the information, the materials, the resources that are shared and reviewed with the committee is posted on our website. So anyone from the community can go in after that committee meets and see the information that was shared and discussed with the groups. So right there front and center for our community to kind of uh, track uh, uh, the information that the, those folks are considering as they pull together a, a possible proposition to bring to the board to consider. Uh, a couple of just announcements of dates. We're getting toward the end of the school year. The first uh, CSISD employee award ceremony, that will be Thursday, May the 11th. So that's before uh, our next regular uh, board meeting. Thursday, May 11th at six o'clock. That's at uh, Grace Church, Southwood Campus, just right here across from Central Office and Consolidated High School. Uh, Ms. McAdams did touch on this. Education Foundation has two big activities here toward the end of the year as well. Uh, next Wednesday, the 26th, is our Hall of Fame banquet. That's always uh, one of my most favorite to see the students and the teachers uh, recognize. That is next Wednesday, 6.30 at the Hilton uh, board members. The scholarship reception is Monday, May 15th. That's at Pebble Creek uh, Country Club. That begins, I believe, at 6 p.m. Uh, and also, of course, our graduation ceremonies. College View, Thursday, May 25th, 7 p.m. That's at Rudder Three Theater at Texas A&M. College Station High School is Friday, May 26th. Begins at four o'clock and consolidated starts at eight o'clock. Uh, and, and I believe the way Reed Arena is doing business now, that they are very much limited time on graduation ceremonies. So things should be moving. Uh, probably a little quicker than we're accustomed to at our comprehensive high school ceremonies. So, Mr. Horak. All right. That'll bring us to item E, hearing of citizens. I have two, any others? Okay. Uh, during this time, public comments are welcome. The Open Meetings Act prevents us from responding to speakers regarding items not on the agenda. Comments related to items on the agenda may be discussed during deliberations on that specific agenda item. Please complete the note card and give it to the executive assistant. Public comments are limited to three minutes per person. Those needing an interpreter may have up to six minutes. Each person has one opportunity at the microphone regardless of minutes used. 
unused minutes may not be accrued by another speaker. The executive assistant will time the comments and alert the president when time has expired. The board asks that those addressing the board refrain from derogatory comments. Our first card is Miss Connie Baker. Yes, come right. Uh, we're going to use this microphone, correct? Yes. yes. Okay. It's exciting to see all the kids out there getting awards, so congratulations. Um, my name is Connie Baker, and I want to thank the board for hearing us tonight. We are here tonight to ask the board to consider making funding changes for teachers who teach computer class. Currently, these positions are funded as an instructional aid pay, which means that they get paid $12 an hour, or $16,970 a year. After taxes, these teachers are bringing home approximately $250 a week. The problem that this creates for the students, as I see it, is that the district has lowered the expectation and has overlooked the important role that technology plays in our society today. Today, our students are taking STAR online. The education agency recognizes that technology is all-consuming, as we know in our society today. So the Texas agency recognizes that, that there are techniques that need to be taught for kindergarten through fourth grade in the computer classroom. But did you know that where techniques are mandated to be taught by the state, that means that the expectation is that those techniques are taught by a certified teacher. As educators, we know that paraprofessionals or instructional aides are not allowed to in introduce new curriculum, but other, but supplement that. According to TEA, it states, paraprofessionals are approved to provide educational assistance to students, but they must be supervised by a, quality, by a qualified teacher. And they cannot run an educational program independently or create lesson plans. I have left each one of you a copy of the TEKS for pre-K through kindergarten for computer technology. So you can see the rigor that is expected that needs to be taught to all of our students today. I caution you to not only hear that these positions pay employees $250 a week, but also think about the huge responsibility that teaching every student, including those with disabilities, making lesson plans, all while remaining committed to working in the district. Unfortunately, $250 is not sustainable for most per week. Therefore, this position is seeing a high turnover rate and our students are suffering. We are asking that the district fund this position as a teacher pay just like they currently do for art, PE, and library. We are asking to fund this position differently so that our district students can have the curriculum taught to them by a certified teacher who is committed to excellence and is compensated for his or her talents. We believe that with a certified teacher, thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, next speaker, Fallon Baker. Hi, everybody. Good evening. My name is Fallon Baker, and in January, I took a position teaching elementary technology, which I love. I love my school, my students, and my administrators. So I do not want to come across as anything but thankful and privileged to be working for CSISD. I do hope, though, you appreciate my level of concern for my students and my concern for my pay. I am the third person to have this position in two years. For such an important role, this position has such a high turnover rate. This creates a lack of stability for students. 
I know what the students are capable of learning and I wanna to continue to provide that consistency, support, encouragement, and my presence for the next year. As we move into this new area of technology, we are beginning to see everything switch out online. We must embrace the cha these changes by equipping schools with necessary curriculum and support to teach this. As all classes, this knowledge of computer usage is foundational. You must start early and make it a priority to continue using these skills. These skills will carry students into their adult lives as we only advance further as a society. I am deeply concerned because STAR testing now expects students to be able to work on a computer in order to type their story, so we must acknowledge the importance of the class. Since my time in this position, I have increased the rigor and incorporated fun, engaging programs to introduce topics. Through various activities, I have introduced concepts such as typing, coding, graphic design, and digital citizenship. I also implemented a behavior reward system in the first annual Typing Bowl, which starts next week. I have hyped up the Typing Bowl and my students are so excited. Things like this have increased engagement, determination, and classroom community. It creates an environment to connect with other classmates, but also increase, increases want for individual achievements. I've witnessed my enthusiasm about computer literacy translate to them. I am beginning to build relationships with students and they're learning to trust me. They are starting to see the fun and learning opportunities that this classroom can offer. I want to offer them the stability and be a popular face for them next year. The only thing is I make $250 per week. I cannot live on that. I want to remain in the position as their certified teacher for the next school year. I want to remain at a campus that I love, work with staff that I admire, and foster and teach children that I have fallen in love with. But without teacher pay, I cannot stay. So I ask the board for your help. I need the board to recognize that our students need to be taught their teaks by a certified teacher. It is a position that is very important and possesses the same time and teak requirement as a teacher position. Therefore, I ask you to allocate the necessary funds for this position as a teacher funded position. I promise to provide stability to a great group of kids and teach them the needed skills to become computer proficient. Thank you so much for your time, Ms. Baker. Thank you. That'll bring us to item F, consent agenda. Those items are item G, H2, I1, I2, J3 through J10. That is all. I motion to approve. Second. I have a motion by Dr. Payne, a second by Ms. McAdams. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries 6 0. Bring us to item H1, consideration, discussion, and possible action related to the district improvement plan goals for 23-24. Mr. Martindale. Thank you, Mr. Wright. With more details on this agenda item is Ms. Parkerson, our Executive Director of Secondary Education. Good evening, Mr. Martindale, Mr. Horak, and members of the board. Um, as you know, in spring of 2021, uh, the, the district went through a strategic planning initiative, and as part of that work, I created six uh, aspirational goals for us to work toward as a school district for the next uh, three to five years. We're in year two of that plan. And so at this last week's uh, DIC, or District Education Improvement Committee meeting, um, the, that committee moved for us to continue using those six goals from the strategic plan as our district improvement plan goals for the 2023-24 school year. And so I'm here this evening um, to ask for your approval um, so that we can officially adopt those goals and begin planning forward for our district improvement plan for the next school year. Move to approve. A second. A motion by Mr. Decker, a second by Ms. Nolan. Any further discussion, questions? Just a quick comment. I'm glad we continue to work the plan. That's what it was about. We knew it wasn't a, a one-time deal or a one-year deal, and I just am I'm glad that we've got it in place and, and continue to, to work towards those goals. Thank so you. Motion, all in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries 6-0. That will bring us to item J1. Consider approval for the award of RFQ number 23-008 for annual audit services to Weaver and Tidwell LLC for the year ending August 31st, 2023, with the option to extend for up to two, up to two, two-year extensions. Mr. Martindale, I did good. <laughs> 
do the math on that real quick, Ms. Torek. Uh, here with additional information on our request for qualifications for auditing services is our CFO, Ms. Amy Dross. Thank you, Mr. Martindale. So in February um, of this year, um, the uh, College Station ISD um, sub, uh, released request for qualifications for our audit services. Uh, those would be for the physical year in that we're in right now for August 31, 2023. Um, we received three um, submissions. All three firms met the required criteria, um, which includes a specific uh, number of hours of continuing education um, and a peer review um, of the firm, uh, just to name two of those. So in addition to that, we had a committee um, that reviewed the a set of criteria that was pre-established. Um, that committee included members of the business office, of course, but we also included um, the child nutrition and human resources. Those are two departments that are very involved um, in the audit, uh, particularly compliance and review. So um, they also participated in the evaluation. We looked very closely at the experience um, of the audit firms in Texas public schools as well as other government entities um, because our industry is, is unique. So we wanted to make sure that they had experience in both of those. Looked at the size and structure of the team, uh, the qualifications of the members that would be assigned to College Station ISD, um, and their comprehensiveness of their work plan. Uh, those were just some of the criteria that were very important uh, to us as we evaluated it. Um, we also conducted interviews of two of the um, three firms that qualified and we scored. Um, so after review, um, it was a recommendation of the committee that we move forward um, with the firm of Weaver and Tidwell LLC. Uh, and that would be for the current year that we're in, August 31, 2023, um, with the option for two two-year renewals of that particular agreement, so. I'd move to approve the uh, award of the annual audit services as recommended. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Ben, a second by Dr. Payne. Any further discussion? Question? I just have a quick question. So uh -huh. did you say that um, they assign actual like people to us? Um, they do. We look at the audit team that they would assign right now. Um, of course, that has an option to change based on turnover. Um, but we look at the partner in charge and, and those that would be working on it and the experience level that they all have. Um, they are subject to change based on resignations and sort, but that's right. right. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I think it's healthy to, to do this like we've talked about. Um, so um, not shocking, Weaver came out but um, as, the, as the winner in it, that they've done a great job for us. So, mm -hmm. um, but it kind of has them sharpen their pencil per se on that, so that's good. Um, we have a motion on the table. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries six zero. Brings us to item J2, consider approval for the award of RFP number 23-011 for depository services to Truist Bank for two years beginning September 1, 23. 23 and ending August 31st, 2025, with the option to renew for up to three additional two year periods. Mr. Martindale. Thank you, Ms. Torak and board members uh, here to share additional details on, regarding this request for proposal. Ms. Strauss. Thank you again. Um, so, again, in February, the district um, issued a request for um, proposal for our depository services. Um, this was a mandatory um, request for proposal this time. TEA does regulate um, at least the maximum terms for these or their maximum renewals. Um, Truist Bank, who has been the district's depository um, for a very long time. Um, it's hard to say exactly when they've gone through a number of mergers and changes. Uh, they do an excellent job. Um, so, you know, one would think that uh, we're looking mainly at cost of services or our fees, but there is so much more to um, a school district account, particularly of our size. Um, we have an enormous number of transactions that has to be um, processed. Uh, there is uh, collateral that has to be um, assigned, and there's a number of ways that those can uh, be done. Um, and, and they do a lot of uh, transfers for us um, with bonds and, and that sort. So there's a number of things other than fees um, or interest rates that we're looking at. Um, but it is our recommendation that we award the depository contract to um, Truist Bank 
for uh, two years, beginning September 1, 2023, and uh, up to three two-year renewals, which is allowed by Texas Education Agency. I motion to approve as presented. Second. Motion by Dr. Payne, second by Mr. Ben. Any further discussion or comments? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank Six you. zero. Thank you. That will take us to item K1. Consider approval of the guaranteed maximum price total project budget for the construction of phase one of the CTE Center and authorize the superintendent to execute all related documents using 21 bond funds. Mr. Martindale. Thank you, Mr. Warrack. Actually, Mr. Ross volunteered to help Mr. Hall with this agenda item because but uh, I told him that we'd leave it up to Mr. Hall. So with additional details on GMP for first phase of CTE Center, our Executive Director of Facilities. John. Thank you, Mr. Martindale, Mr. Horak, members of the board. Uh, I know Kevin could help me. If it's okay, I'll cover this one, Kevin. So uh, um, I would like to start off by saying thank you to the College Station ISD voters uh, for approving the 21 bond issue for $78.125 million. Uh, I would like to say that we, uh, we really stretch those dollars a long ways uh, for the good of uh, CSIST. And of course, one of the major projects identified in the 21 bond package was, uh, was the one I'm bringing uh, forth for your approval tonight, uh, the Career and Technical Education Center Phase 1 project, uh, sometimes referred to as the Ag Barn. The scope of the work uh, includes construction of a new agricultural barn facility for animal holding, a covered practice arena, an office space, restrooms, and a concession room. The project would be located out on the 90-acre Fry Tract alpha, off of uh, South Dowling Road, and the construction of this work would actually commence in just a few weeks, in May of 23, uh, and the duration would be about 13 months. The guaranteed maximum price for this project was based on the competitive seal proposal process, which was advertised to the public as required by statute. And our construction manager at risk contractor, Spa Glass Construction, uh, coordinated this effort for us. Uh, on March the 30th, 23, I went down with Tom Stewart, our coordinator of construction services, down to uh, Spa Glass's corporate office, uh, and we were in attendance as uh, bids were received and tabulated. And I did attach their proposal for your references needed. So in consultation with CSISD and VOK Architects, Spa Glass Construction, has reviewed the final scope of work, reputation of subcontractors, quality of materials specified, and other relevant factors in arriving at the GMP for this project, which is presented to you this evening in the amount of $6,561,279 for this project. I would also just like to take a moment to publicly thank Drew Kane uh, and the whole Spa Glass staff uh, for all of the work they did in the background to put this uh, GMP together for us. I think I saw, there he is. Hey, Drew, put your hand up. Thank you. Uh, additional soft costs above and beyond the GMP uh, would include furniture, fixtures, and equipment, technology, architect and engineering fees, construction materials testing, and project contingency in the uh, corresponding amounts listed in my memo for a grand total of $7,552,775. So, it's recommended that the Board of Trustees of College Station Independent School District consider approval of the guaranteed maximum price of $6,561,279 from Spall Glass Construction and the total project budget in the amount of $7,552,775 for the Career and Technical Education Center Phase 1 project. It's further recommended that the superintendent or his designee be authorized to sign any necessary documents to implement the guaranteed maximum price, and that the Board of Trustees authorizes the commencement of the work associated with this project. And with that, I'll open up the floor for any questions and comments you might have. I know it's been a long time coming um, ever since uh, it started before we even uh, the original planning committee. So um, I'm really excited because as our school district grows and there's a lot of kids who want to get involved in agriculture and maybe can't because of where they live, this will give them the opportunity. So I'm really excited about this and uh, enthusiastically say uh, recommend as presented. I'll second and I'm also super excited for the opportunity that this is going to give kids in our district. 
Agreed. One, one question. How long does it take you to drive out there right now? <laughs> oh, Depends gosh. on if there's a train. Well, depends on who's driving. I'd say maybe 15 minutes. <laughs> Not too bad. No, I'm it's glad we have this property and glad we're going to be using it for this purpose. It's kicking this off, so it's exciting. We have a motion by Dr. Payne, second by Ms. Nolan. Any further discussion or questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries 6 0. Thank you, Mr. Hall. That'll bring us to executive session. We will meet briefly there, possibly. We'll see. And uh, we'll see y'all when we get back. All right, that'll bring us to item M, back in open session, brings us to item N, adjournment. <laughs>